Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel The Bushcraft Padawan. Regular viewers and subscribers will know that at the beginning of this year, 2018, I made a commitment to spend at least one full day out in the woods every month for the entire year, as I did throughout 2017, but I was overnighting at least once a month for the entire year. It's the last day of May, so I'm frantically grabbed my gear and come out for a day in the woods to tick the month of May off. You'll also know if you're a regular viewer that rather than just come out into the woods and tinker, I always like to come up with some sort of plan or idea, or something in mind that I want to practice or refine or attempt for the first time. And this month's no exception. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you'll know that back in April, I attended the Woodcrafter course with Paul Kirtley. One of the things we did on that course was to take a dead standing tree from being dead and standing using an axe and a saw. We felled it, we processed it and we used it for fire. And that's something that I want to do today, something I want to practice and replicate again today. I want to take a tree that's dead standing using the tools and the techniques that I've been shown and, and process it down and use it for firewood. So once that's one thing, one thing of, of today's tasks, once I've got the fire going, I want to practice some different recipes because cooking was an integral part of the Woodcrafter course. So I want to practice some cooking today. I've got my eye on a rice pudding recipe that's in the Raise Me, Ray Mears and Lars Falk book on the land. I'm going to give that a try today. And I'm also going to try out some bannock bread. I've tried bannock before, or to be more accurate, my son's tried bannock before and his dad ruined it for him because I got my hand, it was taking too long, so I got my hands on the water bottle, I added too much water and ended up, it was, it was way too, it took a lot of recovering. He was in a right state with his hands trying to recover it. So I'm gonna take it steady this time and I'm gonna attempt some bannock bread. So three things, um, fell a standing tree, process it for firewood, using the techniques I've been shown. Once I've got a fire going, some rice pudding and some bannock. Now, I just mentioned a few seconds ago my son Finlay, and it is the last day of May, which means that it is a half term holiday in my area of the woods, and I'm not alone in the woods today. Look who I've got with me. There's one, and there's the other, and there's the other one trotting along behind. So, guys, I've just explained to people what I want to get out of the day. What about yourself, Finlay? What do you want to practice or try today? Uh, I want to put up a hammock. Uh, in between two trees and I want to practice my bushcraft skills with my um, bushcraft knife and saw. Okay, so hammock up and then some knife skills and some saw skills. Yeah. Cool, I'm sure we'll find some things for you to practice with. And what about you, young lady? What about yourself, Evie? Um, I wanted to go on a swing, make a den and make a hammock. Okay, great, all bushcraft related. Fortunately, the area that we've picked today, that somebody's already put a swing in place quite close to there, so I don't have to try and fashion a swing. And it's pointless asking Willow what she wants to get out of today because it looks like she's already getting out of today. What she's got, oh, there she is. A um, few seconds ago, though, just as I was recording the start of this video, she did bury her head in a high stump of a tree. So I had a look at what she was so interested in, and this is what I saw. As you can see, four very small eggs there. Luckily she didn't damage any, she didn't crack any, she didn't take any. So I'm making sure that when I walk her back past there in a few minutes time that she's back on the lead again. No idea what the uh, bird's nest bed's eggs are. Maybe you know, maybe you can let me know in the comments below. So that's what we all want to get out of today. So without further ado, the day is ticking on. Let's get cracking. I'm on the edge of a coppiced area here. Um, it's previously been coppiced for sweet chestnuts. In fact, it's where I came and did the Conversations with Chestnuts course back in the autumn of 2017. I'm right on the edge of that. And what I've noticed is this particular tree here, dead standing. It's on the edge of a clearing and I stood underneath it and tried to work out where the lean of it is and which way that it would fall and it would seem it would seem like it's actually going to fall into the clearing. So in terms of getting the tree hung up anywhere or catching any other trees on the way down, that seems to be a very small problem. It's actually going to fall towards the camera. Dead standing, fairly decent size. Um, I'm bordering on, it feels quite rotten, so there's an element of me kind of thinking, you know what, I could probably, probably take this down with my barco lap blander, but I'm not going to. I'm actually going to go through the process, um, probably on a tree that's ever so slightly smaller than it really needs to be, 
using my axe to try and, and keep that technique and that practice fresh. Just behind this tree here, you may or may not be able to see, but there is another piece of sweet chestnut rising out the ground. That's going to make it impossible for me to get my full sized bow saw around the back of to make that cut. So I'm going to use my Barco Laplander for that. But the majority of the work is going to be done using the axe. So let's see how we get on. I've made sure that the kids are well to the rear of this and well away at an angle. I've made sure that there's, I've got some escape routes from this. If it all goes wrong, there's some way that I can move back from this tree. I'm not going to trip over anything or walk into anything. And I've once again just double and triple checked that the area this is going to fall into is as clear as it possibly can be and it's not going to, it's not going to snag or catch any other trees or get hung up anywhere on rope. So without further ado, let's start felling this tree. The tree is felled, we've brought it back over, we've processed the tree down, we've got a nice pile of firewood now, we've got the fire lay all sorted out, good to go. I'm now going to start prepping the food. So I've got a bannock mix here, which is three handfuls of plain flour, two handfuls of milk powder, and a teaspoon of baking powder, that's there. And I've also got a rice, dry rice pudding mix here as well. The bannock will take, should take less time to cook than the rice pudding, but I'm actually going to start the bannock first because I hope that if I get the dough consistency right when I'm mixing it in my billy can, that it will leave the billy can relatively clean for me to be able to then make the rice pudding. And if I do it the other way around, I imagine there's going to be a lot of residue inside the billy can if I make the rice pudding first. So I'm going to make the dough for the bannock first, put it to one side, then get straight on with making the rice pudding and hopefully if I stagger the start times of them we can have bannock bread with Nutella to dip inside some camp made rice pudding. What could possibly go wrong? Fire's going well behind me. The rice pudding is all mixed up really, really easy. Dry, mixed it at home. Then put that in the billy can, put a litre of water in, circulated the water and stuck it over the fire. So I've uh, uh, <laughs> not tasted it yet. It's not cooked yet. So let's just hold forth on judgment. But in terms of actually getting it over the fire, the process, dead simple, just a little bit of prep at home. And of course you could prep it in the field as well. So that's cooking as we speak, baking, boiling, burning choose uh, your choose the word of choice i've mixed the bannock dough now that's just sat over there just waiting for me to um, establish some embers that i can rake out and start to cook off the bannock so let's see how it all works out okay guys what about the score out of 10 for the bannock bread then definitely 10 Definitely 10. And was the definitely 10 affected at all by the fact that you've smothered it in Nutella chocolate sauce? A bit. What about you, Evie? No. Oh, so it's a 10 out of 10 for the bannock regardless of the Nutella. Oh, right then. I shall give uh, your regards to the chef.
End of the day folks, so it's time for us to tuck into our rice pudding that I've been slaving over, it seems like for hours. The recipe said to hang it high over the fire, so I did, and just watched it, and watched it, and watched it, and watched it. it nothing happened, so in the end I got it right, not quite into the fire, but I got it, I got it low enough that it was, um, that a chemical reaction was going to take place sooner rather than later. So, the proof is in the pudding, what did you think of it Finley? Good. You like it? Out of ten? Probably nine and a half. Oh, nine and a half, so near. What about yourself, Evie? Do you like it? Ten. Ten. Brilliant. My good books. And for any of my Canadian views out there, we're flying the flag for you, pun intended, by dropping in some Canadian maple syrup that I brought back the last time I was over in Toronto. So we're adding a little bit of zhuzh to the rice pudding with some maple syrup, which is making it go down very nicely indeed. Review of the day then, what went well, what didn't go so well, what did we cover off? I wanted to practice using my axe and my saw to fell and process a dead standing tree into firewood. And as you hopefully saw throughout the course of this video, I did that. Was it the biggest tree I could have found? No. Um, was it the tree that allowed me to use both my axe and my folding bow saw at the same time? Not at the same time, but for the same fell. No, it wasn't. I had to use my barcode as you saw but it was good practice it was good practice finding one because i don't normally go looking for them if i'm perfectly honest and it was a good experience actually using the axe again getting the bottom cut getting the 45 degree cut going down remembering that you should be taking out small ch or chunks each time rather than trying to actually cut lines into the tree it's all about removing chunks that form the angle that you want so it was good it all came flooding back and as you saw in the video it fell where I said it would fell slash really hoped that it would fall. So that went well. And then you've seen us filling our faces and baking away the bannock and the rice pudding. So that's what I wanted to get out of the day. So from my perspective, it was a success. As every day out in the woods is, regardless of whether you achieve what you, you'd set out to achieve or not. What about yourself, Evie? Um, because I wanted to make a hammock do it then and go on the swing, we got to go on the swing. You did get to go on the swing, yeah, I had good fun on that. Um, and we got to make a hammock and me and Finley played with it, and, but we didn't get to do a den. We didn't do a den, we didn't do a shelter today, did we? No. Not to worry, maybe next time. What about yourself, Finley? Oh uh, yeah, I put up the, um, the hammock with Dad and then I carved with the back of my knife I scraped the bark off um, a twig and used it for a toggle on the um, tripod. So you practiced using your saw today, didn't you? Yeah. But not to actually do any sewing. It's interesting no. to know that it's not just, a saw just doesn't have to be for sawing wood. You could use it for scraping wood, so that was worth noting. And what was the other thing? Oh, your knife. As you say, you used your knife notch. to carve a notch into the toggle, didn't you? Yeah. So all in all, I think it was a success. You can just see somebody's head start to poke into the shot there. Maybe you can see a tail wagging. She hasn't stolen any food from us yet, so I think she considers her day not a success yet, but there's still plenty of time before we pack up and go home for her to snaffle or something. So the jury's out as to whether Willow thinks it's been a success or not. Thank you for taking the time to watch. As always, if you enjoyed what you saw, if you liked, if it made you smile, if it made you think, please do give it a thumbs up. There's a share button below. You know what to do with it by now. And last but not least, a big thank you to everybody that's already a subscriber. If you are not one of those hallowed few, then do click on the link that's in this corner of the screen down here, just off Finley's left shoulder, and you will become a subscriber. Thanks as always for taking the time out of your day to watch Sue in the Woods. Cheers. <laughs>